Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the regular meeting of the Dearborn Heights City Council, November 23rd, 2021. Madam Clerk, would you please take roll call? Yes, um, council members, just a reminder to state the city state that you're currently located. Uh, Dave Abdella. Here in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Zuhair Abdelhak. Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Mo Beydoun. Here, Wayne County, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Robert Constant. Here, Dearborn Heights, Wayne County, Michigan. Denise Malinowski Maxwell. Here, Putton Township, Michigan. Um, I think Putton Township. Ray Muscat. Here, Wayne County, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. And Tom Wenzel. Here in the great city of Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Okay, Madam Chair, you have a quorum. You have a quorum. Okay, next, Councilman Wenzel. Will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I think Gary raised his hand. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the United States of America, and to the Republic, Republic to which it stands, stands, one nation, nation under God, 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 indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Everyone, please be seated. Next, we have oath of office is administered to Mayor Bill Bazzi, Clerk. Okay. City Clerk Lynn Senya and Councilman Zuhair Abdul Haq for the term ending 12 31 21. Okay, let's unmute. Madam Chair. Club Wiki, yes. I did take the oath of office in front of a Judge Turfi. Oh, oh, you did? Yes, I did. Okay, okay. Um, oh, Madam Ms. Chair, Miyake, um, yes. is there something going on? You actually have to give the physical location by stating the county, city, township, or village, and state from which he or she is attending. So we also okay. have to have everyone say the county as well. Okay, Thank I you. don't believe that's in the things, but it's in, I will it's go in with the, it. Okay, it's in the I will go with it. Will you say the county, uh, Councilman Abdella? Wayne County. Uh, Zuhair Abdahak. Wayne County. And I think everybody else said Wayne County already. I said Wayne County. I think Tom just said... Uh, Anyway, I'll leave I'm running the meeting. To uh, let's do it again. Wayne, uh, Mo Bay Dune. Uh, Wayne County, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Robert Constant. Here, uh, Dearborn Heights, Wayne County, Michigan. And Denise Malinowski Maxwell. Washtenaw County, Michigan. Oh. Uh, Ray Muscat. Here, uh, Wayne County, Dearborn Heights, Michigan. And Tom Winslow. Here in the great city of Dearborn Heights, located in Wayne County, Michigan. Uh, Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. At this time, once again, we will have the oath of office. And um, Judge Plowicki, would you like to do that? Good evening, Madam Chair. Uh, would you like me to swear in the individuals one at a time or collectively? Whatever you prefer, whatever's easiest. What's ever best for you? Uh, Let's do everyone then, I guess, at the same right. time, because there's not a lot of them. All right. Uh, would it's the individuals to be sworn in, please raise your right hands. Let me, where is the mayor? Okay. Okay. So it's really just the mayor and I. I know there's, there's a council person as well. I'm, I'm sorry, Judge Plowacki. He just let us know that he was sworn in yesterday or previously by Judge Turpin. We did not know that until now. All right, very well. Then thank uh, you. Um, you both solemnly swear uh, that you will support the Constitution of the United States. Uh, please repeat after me. I, Lynn Sanya, no do solemnly swear. No swear then I will support the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States. States. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. The Constitution, Constitution of the State of Michigan. Michigan. The Charter and Ordinances of the City of Dearborn Heights. The Charter, the Charter and, ordinances and Ordinances of Dearborn Heights. City of Timberland Heights. And will perform the duties of. And, and will perform, perform the duties, the duties of, of mayor. Clerk. At your office, uh, to the best of my ability. To the best, best of, of my ability. ability. So help me God. So help, so help me, God. me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Judge Kalecki. 
Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have adoption of updated procedures for electronic meetings to include hybrid meetings. That was Madam uh, Chair. To be. Councilman Constant. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council uh, adopt the updated City Council electronic meeting procedures dated November 18th, 2021, as outlined in 2B. Support. Support by Councilman Baydoun. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have agenda approval. Madam Chair. Councilman Baydoun. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the agenda for the electronically held regular meeting of November 23rd, 2021, as submitted. Support. Supported by Councilman Muscat. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have approval of minutes. Minutes from the regular meeting of November 9th, 2021. Council Chair. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdullah. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the minutes for the regular meeting of November 9th, 2021, as outlined in item 4A. Support. Support. Support by Councilman Baydoun. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have public hearing and comment on agenda items. There is a two minute limit. You need to state your name and your city. I see none. Let's move on. Next, we have fund transfers and current claims. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve, approve current claim 61 through 627 as submitted. Support. Support by Councilman Abdullah. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have consideration of bids. This is for city engineer Dib request for bids for renovation of police dispatch center design services. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the request for proposal RFP for the renovation of the police dispatch center. This RFP is for design services only as outlined in item 7A. Support. Support. Supported by Councilman Baydoun. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Who is Madam this? Chair. Oh, okay. Councilman Abdullah. Uh, just a quick um, two questions for uh, Director Deeb. And I, I assume he's in. Is that correct? Yep, there he is. There he um, is. Okay, let's. The first question, because I because I've been through um, um, our dispatch center in Dearborn Heights. And it is on the smaller end. I've also been through Dearborn's and Macomb's, and those are obviously quite a bit larger, but I do know that Dearborn's is a combined dispatch. But the one that we have seems to be on the smaller side. Are we going to be in the same exact spot? And, and do you feel, or does the police department in their experiences feel that that's going to be enough size? That's the first question. And I'll let you answer that, and I'll, I'll, I'll ask the second question. Now, I'm not sure if maybe the police chief wants to answer this one, because it seems to be on the smaller side, honestly. Right. So, so before we before we put this uh, RFP together, uh, I had a walkthrough, a detailed walkthrough with the police chief of the facility, and uh, recognizing the limitations, uh, I believe we should be able to do what we what the police want in the in the space we have. So okay. it is doable. That's what I believe. Okay, excellent. And the second question I had, and a lot of the different designs that were in the packet. Um, the, the only one that was uh, less than 2 million was the one in Detroit for Homeland Security in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Everything else was obviously quite a bit, but it was also obviously quite a bit larger. Right. Do you have a particular budget in mind as far as how much we are looking to spend on something like this? Um, I don't, uh, but this is going to, we're going to go through this and engineer's estimate will be developed as part of the uh, RFP. So this is design services and there will be uh, many options that we have to consider and present to the council for approval. So that will be part of the design. Now, if there is a preset budget, I will have to ask the chief to uh, address that. I'm not aware of any. Well, the, the reason I'm bringing that up, because if you looked at all the other ones, they were all quite a bit 
yeah. more. I mean, not more, it was quite a bit more. I mean, we're talking about 20 million, 15 million, et cetera, et cetera. And I do know that obviously we have budget constraints in, yeah. in our case. We're not your typical city that has a crazy amount of money to play with. So with that being the case, I was just thinking uh, at the time I was going through this, that we probably should put to the design, uh, whoever's going to be doing the design, some sort of a parameter, like within 5 million, because as you know, you can build something within 5 million, you can build it within 20, you can build it within yep. 100 million. So the main advantage of doing doing it this way, Council uh, uh, Pro Tem, uh, is that, that we will develop as we go along through the design process, we will develop an engineer's estimate that will give us a pretty good idea what the cost will be if we go out to bid. So that was the main reason for doing it, a design bid built as opposed to a design built. So this will give us a this will give us a good handle on whatever options we decide during the design phase uh, to keep a, a, a handle on the cost. Mm -hmm. So we'll 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 be back to uh, council for presentation prior to award anyway. So this will be for the design, and we'll come back to you with sketches that will show you what we have in mind and what the engineer's estimate will be. Approximate price. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much, Ali. You're Appreciate welcome. it. Not a problem. Madam Chair. Questions before we vote on this? Madam Chair. Councilman Abdul Haq. Yeah, I believe we did uh, talk about less than a million dollars for this project, around 800,000, if I'm not mistaken. That was the proposed budget for this project. So I hope the engineer Deep keeps that in mind. Okay. Not a problem. Thank you. Well, yep. well, uh, Councilman, was it 800? I'm, I'm, I don't remember. We 100%. talked about eight, yeah, we talked about around 800,000 for the whole thing, for the equipment, for renovation, and everything else. So that was design and construction, Councilman? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the number we talked about. And I hope if you need more money, you come back to the City Council. Will do. So there is no millions of dollars for this project, as, as far as I know. Okay. Any further discussion before we vote on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next under reports from mayor, we have, have the board of review appointments and reappointments. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council concur with the mayoral appointments of Jennifer Gross and Dana Parrish to the board of review. Terms to expire January 2024. Ms. Gross' appointment to replace Hassan Ahmad, who was recently elected to City Council, and Mr. Parrish's appointment is to replace James Rulo. In addition, City Council concur with the reappointments of Dennis Sabota and Ali Char, terms to expire January 2025. Furthermore, remove Christine Sullivan Rathwell and Frank Mathis from the Board of Review's record as outlined in 8. A. Support. For my Councilman Abdullah, is there any discussion? Madam All Chair. those in favor say aye. Aye. Council aye. Chair. Okay, we're voting, Councilman. I know. There was Councilman. Councilman Abdullah had a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it's just a quick statement, uh, Council Chair. Just wanted to tell you, I, I looked into some of the people that are being appointed, and they're pretty good, in my opinion, they're pretty good appointees. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Any further discussion before we vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have approval to dispose of equipment. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that we concur with Mayor Bozzi and approve the disposal of the uh, following items from the break room at City Hall two couches, one TV stand, one TV, one chair, two tables, and one area rug. As Support. outlined in 8B. Support. Supported by Councilman Baydoun. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Oh, Councilman Abdella. I, I have a question for our Council uh, Miyatki, or if the mayor would like to answer this. And, and I'm going to tell you honestly, I've always found it kind of silly uh, for us as a body to be voting on getting rid of a table and a chair, you know, you know, a TV stand. I mean, th think about it just logically, you know, for us as a body, as a council to vote all seven of us on getting rid of a TV stand, it just sounds almost 
I don't know, it just doesn't make sense to me. It seems like something like that should be left to the administration to look, okay, yeah, let's get rid of it and get rid of it. Why do we have this in place? It just sounds so crazy every time we vote on this. So I'm not Madam, sure if the mayor wants to answer this or Madam maybe Chair, Gary Miatki. Um, Madam Chair. Who wants to answer it? Madam Chair. Councilman Abdelhaq. <laughs> I agree with uh, Councilman Abdullah because those are under $1,500 and it is in the discretion of the administration to do so. So I think uh, those should be handled by the administration from now on if they are less than that amount. Council Chair? Council Chair? Yes, Councilman Muscat? Well, the problem is, is if we allow tables and chairs uh, you know, is, is something going to slip through the crack like trucks and, and things of that nature, uh, even though the truck may be worth 600 bucks, we still have to be, you know, there's still equipment, there's still property that belongs to the city, and it's property. We're in charge of that also. So I, I believe we should just leave it alone the way it is. Yep. Because I, I, things I, are going to get screwy. Somewhere along the line, something's going to get screwed up. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, Go ahead, have you seen that in the past where yep. somebody said that they were in charge of all the stuff at city and they can do what they want, move things around, but let's not go there, please. I yep. agree. I agree. I agree. But, so. but council chair, but at the same time, I'm moving, you know, okay. I mean, I get what you're saying, councilman Muscat, but at the same time for us to vote on a, you know, 45 year old TV stand, well, it's just- property. My, my thought is that if council voted to purchase it, they should vote to dispose of it. Madam Could be a rule of thumb. Well, I respectfully disagree, but I will go by democracy. Thank you. Mr. Mayatki. Uh, Mayor Baz is next. Okay, I was going to say whatever the council wishes, you know, we can do. We can we can supply you a list if we decide to dispose anything, you know, under fifteen hundred bucks. You know, we can do that. So whatever the council like wants, that. I'm just trying to be transparent by letting you guys know when we dispose anything that you guys are aware. And yeah, some of these items might not been purchased under council uh, if they're under fifteen hundred, obviously. So I think Mr. Miyaki probably can chime in. Uh, <laughs> If, if I may, uh, Council Chair, uh, the only concern, obviously, with coming up with a rule in terms of valuations, is especially with regard to property that doesn't have a clear value, then you are going to potentially have an issue with respect to whether or not it is at that value. So it usually be prudent, especially if you have a list of property, to just take care of it by virtue of a vote, and then everyone is clear that it was disposed of with the knowledge of the council. Yes. And yeah, I agree. That, okay, very good, thank you. I agree. Yep. Yep. This time, is there any further discussion before we vote on this? Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. Well, yeah, I agree. It's it, it may be more trouble to set a value and then say, okay, anything under this amount we won't uh, approve, but it's city property. And I think the key is what the used property is worth and it i think it takes more time to value it and then to just put it on the agenda and approve it Council okay chair. at this time let's take a vote Please, on this chair. we're getting too far off base here yeah, I, I, I just have a quick question chair. council chair okay because we're, we're just we're discussing this for 10 minutes when we could have voted and been done with it <laughs> we could have voted okay, on I, I, I have the same a, thing I, I have a question council chair go ahead thank Councilman. you um, my question is, can we donate any of these, uh, things that we're going to be disposing of? Can we, you know, can somebody use the call? Call? Can we send it over to Zaman International or the Amity Foundation or anything? They're shaking their heads. No. If, if you've seen them, Mo, we went through the basement and stuff is horrible. Horrible stuff. Is, okay. We well, talked uh, before donating. Okay. At this time, let's take a vote and move on. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes had it. Next, for reports from city officials, we have city engineer deed transfer of funds. Council Madam Chair. Chair. Councilman Muscat. 
I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the transfer of $3,109,151.13 from the bond proceeds bank account to the water operations account in an order to reimburse the funds paid from the water operations fund for the projects that are financed by the 2021 bond proceeds. In addition, I authorize the transfer, the treasurer to transfer the funds outlined in 9A. Support, Support. or- Support by Councilman Constant. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, we have Grants and Budget Compliance Director Jamal, Michigan Indigent Defense Commission, MIDC grant. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council accept the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission grant number 2022-84 for fiscal year 2022 in the amount of $200,186 and authorize the comptroller to sign the agreement. Furthermore, authorize the comptroller to increase the following general ledger accounts, MIDC grant revenue uh, number 260, et cetera, by $190, $451,000.15 MIDC legal fees, 260-130-848.130 by $190,451 and district court contractual services 101-130-804-000 by $9,735.10. In, in addition, authorize the mayor and the comptroller to sign the necessary warrants and the treasurer to issue payment in an amount not to exceed $9,735.10 from account 101-130-804 and no more than $190,451.15 from account 260-130-848-130 as outlined in 9B. Support. Board by Councilman Baydoun, is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Madam Chair, this is being done at the district courts all over the state because they're trying to have people, especially those in custody, plead and resolve their case right at the initial arraignment. And the court assigns attorneys to meet with the defendants. And it's, it's a very good idea. It'll save the city a lot of money. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion before we vote on this? Madam Chair. Councilman abdel -Hawk. Okay, I did bring this subject before, and this is a controller issue. It's not Mr. Jamal, but I thank him for bringing it up. Can he tell us how much we have left from last year in this account? To my knowledge, we have $86,000 left from last year account. And I don't know if the state going to give us 190 or only 104,000 because okay, let's have him. he's ready to answer. Let's answer briefly, please. Go ahead. What was the question for Mr. Jamal or for me? For you or him, anybody who wants to answer, I'm, I'm willing to well, I mean, I, answer. Uh, okay, go ahead, Mr. Jowen. Okay, well, I mean, the whole issue with this, uh, we passed it through city council to approve the amount that was approved last year and then uh, we got the grant numbers. So um, uh, Councilman abdul Haq requested that we change the amounts approved to the number of the actual grant that's come in, uh, which in my understanding is the $190,000 that you see on this, uh, on this motion. And then, um, so if the, the money left over, I don't believe has anything to do with the grant coming in, but I can check on that with you. I don't have the paperwork with me right now. I'm sitting at home, so. Mr. Okay, Jawad, not, not to be very testy with you, but you know, just moving a number from last year to this year is the, to start with is wrong. Okay, so a question because uh, what we question did was... is, I want to make sure that you are putting in the budget when you bring it to the city council, the right numbers, not numbers from last year. Councilman, with all due respect, we didn't get a number. 
until after we, we created the budget. So the budget was an estimate. Once we got the correct number is when you made the request to change it. I had the number one week before I brought it to you with my respect to you. If you didn't get it before okay. me, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I will, I just want you to make sure that the state is going to give us the 190, not 104, because we have 86 left from last year. Okay, I mean, I can check on that or Mr. Jamal can answer you if, since he brought the proposal. If Mr. Jamal can, can answer, I will <clears throat> be happy to hear him. Okay. Uh, yes, we will, uh, we will receive both. You, you will receive 190,000, Mr. Jamal? Uh, yes, according to the agreement, that's our allotment, and it's up to the state to allocate whatever they feel uh, after evaluation, and that's done in the past through the court administration. Right now, it will be done through the treasury department, through the control department, because of the new law uh, that a third party now control the allocations. There's no more the ones who spent approved. So there is a line of demarcation uh, because of conflict of interest. Thank you. Just so we're clear, you're talking about like the actual administration of the grant, uh, you mm -hmm. know, requesting money for reimbursement for the different uh, attorneys involved in that. But that's, that's what we're talking about. There needs to be a third party involved in bringing the grant into the city. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's more uh, of a question to uh, the court administration, uh, which is uh, Miss Atkins. Uh, she is uh, the one who who understand all this. I defer that to her, even though I know, but I I prefer that she will answer that. She was okay. the person administering um, the grant before. Corporate Council Miyake, they aren't directing the question to you. Do you have something to more to say on this? Yes, I Go do. Ahead. Go ahead, uh, please. Basically, uh, yes, the court administrator would be the one who would be able to answer mm -hmm. the question. When the MIDC uh, arraignments were instituted, uh, basically you'll see that there's a billing on my, um, whenever I do these, uh, it was a program that was instituted. I had to be involved as corporation counsel on behalf of the city as the administrative control unit for the 20th district court. In essence, all of these amounts in terms of grants are intended to reimburse uh, the court and or the city with respect to the costs that are actually going to be anticipated. So whatever the amount is, is based on an estimate and is not just money that the city can use for any other purpose. Correct. And if you, if you need further answers on this question, it would seem to me that Court Administrator Atkins would be the one who'd be able to answer them, but essentially the amounts are based on estimates of the costs that were anticipated to be borne by the court in administering this new program that's been required by the state. Thank you. Question before we vote on this. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, we have Grants and Budget Compliance Director Jamal, the FEMA PDMC 2016 grant change order number one for residential home demolition of 24077, 24339, 24111, and 24127 courier. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the FEMA PDMC 2016 grant change order number one for residential home demolition at 24077, 24339, 24111, and 24127 Courier Street in the amount of $6,830. That will increase the total demolition contract to 52419 Furthermore, Authorize the mayor and comptroller to sign the warrants and the treasurer to issue payment in the amount not to exceed $52,419. Uh, 
is outlined in item 9C. Support. Support. For my Councilman Caston, is there any discussion? Yes, Council Chair, I have a question. Councilman um, Baydoun, go ahead, please. So to our Compliance Director, Hassan Jamal, thank you so much for everything that you're doing here. I've had a resident reach out to me um, several times the past week telling me about how they need to have their home purchase and they want out of their home. Um, for the residents that are at home that are watching, can you just give us a brief breakdown on how somebody applies for this and how we determine which home we do purchase um, so that the residents at home can understand this and so that I can probably go back and explain this to one of the constituents, please. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Jamal. I, I, I will defer the mayor raised his hand. I think the mayor is uh, very familiar with this program, so I will allow the mayor to answer. Okay. Go ahead, Mayor. Thank, thank you, Council Chair. Thank you, Councilman uh, Baidun. Um, so we actually uh, posted it several times. We announced it uh, several times that uh, anybody in the flood, flood area, they can call the city hall, they can spot, stop by, and there's a form that they have to fill out. And uh, it depends on uh, <clears throat> which area with the grants is, uh, is at then uh, they qualify for certain grants, which, whichever area that, uh, that they apply. Like say, for example, if it's off Hanover versus Courier. So there's different grants for you know, different areas. So they can still come and fill out the application, even though uh, that they're not eligible yet. You know, when it opens up for different grants, uh, Mr. Jamal applied for several grants. And we're hoping that uh, most of these homes around the Ecorse Creek will be purchased. But you can let your resident, anybody that calls you, they can come to the city hall anytime and fill out a form uh, that they're interested in uh, having uh, uh, their, their home uh, be sold or be purchased. So I just wanna just, I'm just gonna reiterate on what the resident has actually told me, Mayor, and I am gonna send them your way uh, and just verbatim, 4-30-2019, I had five feet of water in my basement, and I've reached out to the city several times. Everybody has been giving me the runaround. Uh, so be um, sure that I will sure. see you tomorrow in your office. <laughs> well, they, they can come. We'll just look at uh, where their home is to see if they qualify. And once, if they have their form on file, then we'll just keep that. If not, we'll make sure they fill out a form. Thank but you very not, much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, I appreciate you. Before we vote on this, <clears throat> all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. <laughs> the ayes, pardon? Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Ordinance Enforcement and Animal Control Director Dishroom Enterprise Fleet Management Lease Renewal. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the proposed lease renewal from fleet from enterprise fleet management for seven new 2022 Ford Escape vehicles for the ordinance department. In addition, authorize the mayor to sign the lease agreement on behalf of the city. Furthermore, authorize the mayor and comptroller to sign the necessary warrants and a treasurer to issue payment as outlined in 9B. Support. Support. For by Councilman Constant, is there any discussion? Madam Chair. Councilman Abdullah. Um, I spoke with the with director Dishroon about this, and I looked into it, and then you know, and I made a bunch of calls to different people that could be possibly involved with this, uh, even on the outside of uh, City Hall. I, you know, I, I think I have a better idea. So basically, the concept here in this particular case is we're going to get out of the leases early, and then get seven new cars, seven new 2022 Ford Escapes. I have another option um, that I think should be looked into. The buyouts on these, and I spoke with Director Dishroon, and we even looked into it with uh, Fleet Management uh, Director uh, Mike Hulswith. I hope I didn't pronounce his name wrong. But the buyouts on each and every one of these is somewhere in the ballpark, anywhere between $7,700 to around $7,800 each. Instead, I'd like to possibly recommend, at least at the very minimal it should be looked into, if we buy each and every one of these cars at $7,800 a piece, and then we will outright own these cars or these SUVs. Now, the concern that uh, Director Bill Dishroon had is that the warranties on these would end. With most car dealerships, and it should be looked into with this particular uh, fleet plan, um, you could buy an extended warranty. So as long as you're still within the warranty period, which in this case you are, 
you could buy the extended warranty. As a matter of fact, I'm very familiar with somebody that did that. Buy the extended warranty and continue with the warranty for another three, four, five years. Meanwhile, we'll buy seven cars for 49000 and then own these cars outright for the rest. Depends on how long we're going to be able to use them. And then after that, pass them down like we've done in the past to other department heads that maybe don't need as you know, nice and new and cute and shiny car. I know everybody would love to have a new car, and I'm sure that, you know, um, Director Dishroom did his due diligence, but I'm just throwing out there another idea that I think would be better off and, and, and would save us some money. I love that idea. That's actually, a, I think that's an incredible idea. Council Chair. Uh, Muscat, go ahead, please. You know, I, I'm very familiar with extended warranties after the fact when a car is bought and it's considered used. It is not the same as a new car warranty. You may, you may think it is, but there's a lot of things that are not covered that things go wrong. I happen to know that because it's happened to me on more than one occasion. Number two, we, we approve these things previously for the ordinance department and from other departments really because of the wear and tear on the vehicles. Yeah, you have to pay them down. But now you still got to do your oil changes. You still got to do your tires. You still got to do your brakes. Right now, we're not doing anything to these vehicles. We just drive them, put gas in it, and drive them. And I think that's what saves us the money is later on down the road, we're not putting front ends and rear ends and uh, radiators and alternators, even though they may, it may or may not be covered. It's still a better way to go through this leasing process Okay, because it does save us money. Okay, in the long run, and uh, uh, we went through this. I, I believe when we when we first did this about three or four years ago, uh, and, and we looked at all of the numbers and and we did save money on those vehicles. Uh, Council Chair, this is where I respectfully disagree, Councilman. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that. So if you look at these, um, this will be on page. I have to tell you, uh, well, it's one of the last pages. I don't know if you can see it's on this page, okay? Each and every one of these cars, in addition to be having a buyout of around $7,700, each and every one of these cars had 15,000, here, I'll tell you the exact mileage on them, 15,000, 19,000, 21,000, 21,000, 24,000, 26,000, and 26 or 28,000. It's hard to read the last number. So these had pretty low mileage. And then even looking at these cars, they're in pretty good shape. And again, I'm not saying this is the end all, but I really think this should have another further next level assessment by expertise in that field. I'm not an expert in that field. I'm just using some, what I consider common sense that I think it's something to consider to do that. Buy these out and keep them for the two, three, four years. That would save us. If you take the monthly payment on these for the new cars are $330 a piece. So if we get $330 a piece, you multiply that by 12, that comes out to give or take almost 4,000, 4,000 4, some change per car. And you take that 4,000 some change per car, multiply that by seven. Now you got $28,000 that you're gonna be paying out in just one year. But then instead of paying $28,000 in just one year, you instead pay 49,000, which is an extra 12, whatever it is, I don't know, 10, 15, $20,000. Now you're keeping these cars with very low mileage of 15,000. I'm just telling you, I'm not the expert in this field, but this is something that should be thought out and just given another consideration before we buy all seven new cars. I mean, if you think of the savings for, for the, you, you're buying them out for an extra 10, 15, $20,000, but you're buying out all seven cars. Some to consider if at the very minimal for administration, maybe use these cars, buy them out and use these cars for other uh, departments instead of keeping the old. I know but we then have you some... get the liability of the maintenance. Well, and the I mean, but how, many, how much maintenance do you got? I mean, how much, well, you how much buy... do you have on your vehicle, Councilman? So uh, you know, yeah, come on. <laughs> you got a lot of maintenance on a car. I bu but I bought, changes, but, I, but here's the thing. Tires. I know, tires but I, there's but again, a lot of maintenance on a vehicle to keep a fleet car But there's going. an extended, but there's an extended warranty. And, 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 and look, I respect 15, what you said. That costs about fifteen hundred dollars a car to get a good right. warranty. Right. To get a good warranty, and it doesn't cover everything a new car gets. I know this stuff. I can guarantee okay. you because I bought Ford warranties in the past 
through Ford Motor Company, okay? And then you, you it, and it's not, you drop the car off, it's free. You have a deductible to pay. All right, my source has told me, to okay. my source okay. has told me it's pretty good. I think it ought to be looked into. That's all I'm saying. Let's look at into it to the next level. All right, all right. point of order. At this point, with all due respect, we do have a motion on the table we need to vote on. Council yeah. Chair, a real quick question. Go ahead, Councilman Wenzel. There was a statement made that this is an early buyout, uh, early lease end. Correct. That, we're, we're doing this before the lease end. Period. They end in May. They end in May. So oh, they end in an May. early buyout. Okay. We, they were they, 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 they giving us up to November 30th to, to be able to, you know, use this program up to November 30th. And look, I'm making it clear. I'm sure everybody means well. I'm not saying anybody means wrong. I'm just giving you another idea to just think about. Councilman Beidou. Uh, Council Chair, I just wanted to kind of uh, throw out some more numbers. If we're doing the numbers that Councilman Dave Abdullah on a two-year lease, that's $55,440 to be exact, um, which is, I believe, an additional $8,000, $9,000 if we were to not purchase these. Me personally, I think that's I, I think that's a phenomenal that, that that right there is why we have you know us as council members being on here to really really look into this. I, I would love to ask our administration just to look into it. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if not fiscally responsible, we'll bring it back on and we can make a vote on that. Okay, we're I gonna. Agree. The mayor had his hand up. Normally, I wouldn't address, but since you've asked, go ahead. Uh, I want to address. Um, I do agree with Councilman Muscat. Uh, Muscat and uh, just uh, um, Councilman Protam Abdullah. I just want to talk about the warranty. I've actually looked at it, you know, for other other vehicles. Uh, you can't get, obviously, uh, out of the dealer, when you get a brand new car, you're gonna get, you have to pay a certain amount, usually about, you know, $2,000 or so to have an extended warranty with zero mileage on your vehicle. Um, however, when, when there's uh, mileage on the vehicle, uh, I don't want to quote a number, but it's going to be more than double the number for warranty. And as uh, Councilman Mesca mentioned, you know, from the automotive, I mean, from being an engineer and also been involved with uh, a lot of warranty issues that we've had, you know, from my previous job, um, the these these cars, these miles are on it. You know, they might be low miles, but those are hard miles. We call them very very hard miles. And because they're sitting idle a lot of times and they're just going a certain speed, they're not going to, uh, they're not, you're not going on the freeway. So they're just uh, local miles. So those are very hard miles on these vehicles. So, um, and also the other thing with warranty, just because you get an extended warranty on something like this, so these will be considered used car warranty, not the new car warranty. So those are high uh, deductible. So sometimes the deductible alone is like probably like a quarter percent of what the actual bill is for the vehicle. And the, the warranty doesn't cover a lot of things. So it would might just the extended warranty will cover the power train, but it might not cover electrical. So the electrical is going to be extra. So the extended warranty is a good idea when you purchase a brand new vehicle, but not when you have uh, an existing vehicle that is used. So you can't go back and get the same warranty as you would when you purchase it brand new. And I, you know, as I mentioned, the, these are hard miles on these vehicles. And uh, there's a there's a deal that this company gave us. You know, it has to be uh, be. Uh, uh, I wasn't part of the negotiation. You know, with my chief of staff and also Mr. Dishram. But uh, the end of this month and uh, November. Uh, because these vehicles, we're not going to purchase them right away. They have to be ordered. And it's going to be a few months before we even get them. I believe it's five, six months from now. But they have to be ordered by the end of the month. Thank you. At this time, we do have a motion on the table. Let's take a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Roll call. Councilman Muscat. Yes. Councilman Constant. Yes. Councilman abdel -Hawk. Yes. Malinowski-Maxwell, yes. Abdullah. No. Councilman Beidoun. No. Councilman Wenzel. Yes. 
Motion passes. Next item on the agenda is ordinance and enforcement Ordinance Enforcement and Animal Control Director Dish Room, approval to dispose of equipment. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that the Dearborn Night City Council approve the, wait a minute. We're on 9D, correct? 9E. 9E. We're on 9E. E is an idiot. <laughs> that the Dearborn Night City Council approved the disposal of six <laughs> Vital 5320 iPhones that are no longer functioning and have been replaced in the ordinance department as outlined in 9E. Support. Support. Supported by Councilman Baydoon. Is there any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Police Chief Myers purchase and payment of Police One Training Academy subscription. Madam, Madam Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the pur purchase of the Police One Training Academy subscription from LexiPool in the amount of $3,864. In addition, authorize the mayor and comptroller to sign the warrant and the treasurer to issue payment from the police training account 101 300-962.000 as outlined in 9F. Support. Support. Support by Councilman Baydoon. Is there any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Police Chief Myers purchase and payment of speed measurement signs. Madam Chair. Councilman Abdella. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council approve the purchase of five solar powered speed measurement signs from Elan City's Evolus radar speed signs in amount of $13,642.50. In addition, authorize the mayor and controller to sign the warrant and the treasurer to issue payment from the JAG grant funds 101-300-981. 0.056 is outlined in item 9G. Support. Support. Supported by Councilman Muscat. Is there any questions? Council All those Chair. in favor say, pardon? I got a question, a real quick question for these Council Councilman Chair. Councilman um, do. Do we have any speed uh, radars already in the city? So, um, if hopefully you can hear me, uh, council chair and uh, councilman. So I want to be clear. Are you talking about these types of signs? These types of signs? No. Do we have radar units? Yeah, we have units in cars. We have handheld units. So if you're, I want to be clear, we do have okay. radar units, but these speed reading signs that you're talking about, the LED, the ones that say, thank you for going the speed limit or slow down when you're going too fast. No, these will be the first ones we deploy. Awesome. And now, do, where do we where do we plan on distributing these? Where so, do we know? I don't want to lock in anything because everybody wants to win that lottery uh, of where these are going to go in, in what neighborhood. Um, traditionally, stop signs and things like that are the deterrents inside of neighborhoods. Signs like these are for roadways that have extended stretches uh, without traffic control devices. So Ann Arbor Trail would be a, a prime example. In front of some of the schools um, that we want people to recognize what's going on. Obviously we had the one in front of Riverside, it's closed right now, that they were able to change um, during school days on Beach Daily, if you remember that. Yep. Um, so we do have one deployed there, uh, but that's a little different. Um, so there's a couple places that the traffic division is looking into. Uh, obviously we, we only have a finite amount um, but those are traditionally where they go. If you look at our, one of our neighboring cities, Westland has them going down that stretch of Ann Arbor Trail because it's a low speed road, uh, but um, without any type of traffic control devices. Our Ann Arbor Trail is the same. Um, so there's a couple of places we're looking at. And in the south end, we're around. So, you no, know, these will be perfect, permanent fixtured ones. Um, I'm okay. sure you could, but it'll come with a cost. Okay. These are permanent. Okay, and if we wanted to purchase more, and we see that they uh, they're working, I'd, I'd love to see. Um, you know, I, I, how, how do we get data out of this? 
uh, it all they they all download them all. It's like a Bluetooth connection, Wi-Fi connection. We can download the data that comes out of them. Thank you. Question before we vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, we have Police Chief Meyer's budget amendment. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council authorize the comptroller to amend the general ledger account and increase the J grant purchase account 101-300-981.056 by $13,642.50 and decrease the capital outlay account 101-300-918-000 by $13,642.50. This is for the purchase of five solar powered radar speed measurement signs as outlined in 9H. Report. Report. Report by Councilman Muscat. Is there any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Police Chief Myers rescind council motion 21 546. That's for purchase and payment of a license plate readers. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council rescind council motion 21 546 and approve the purchase of five license plate readers from Flock Falcon in the amount of 12500 in addition, authorize the mayor and comptroller to sign the warrants upon receipt and the treasurer to issue payment from JAG grant account number 101-300-981.056. Furthermore, approve the service agreement from Flock Safety and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement on behalf of the city subject to review by Corporation Council as outlined in 9I. Support. Support. For the Councilman Baydoon, is there any discussion? Council Chair, one more for the Chief of Police while he's while we got his face on the screen. Councilman um, Baydoon, question. So my question is, so you know, this got brought up, and you know, many people from within, within the city kind of reached out to me and wanted to get a little bit more information. People were, you know, kind of saying it's, you know, is this illegal? Or is is this intruding in our community? And so, you know, I tried to explain that this is strictly just a license plate reader, nothing else. Uh, but maybe for the residents at home, maybe our chief of police can go ahead and just kind of explain that and kind of put an ease to to some of the residents at home that who will most likely be watching and wanting to hear, you know, what, what these really do and what they are. And are these going to be on top of light poles or are they going to be on, on the vehicles for the police cars? So, so what I would do is I would, um, we've already, so, you know, this is a recent of something that we've yep. already approved. Yep. Um, to hear a full explanation that I go kind of over in detail, I would watch the YouTube video of that of last meeting because it kind of touches on all those bases. Short answer, no, it is not an invasion of privacy. It's the same information that we would glean if we were standing on a corner. Um, it does not take pictures of people as in cars. But okay. I, I would definitely encourage them to watch the last council session because I give a really in-depth explanation of it. Okay. And then does that help you? Yep, yep, yep. And then my next thing to you is, is this going to be on the actual vehicles or are they going to be on streetlights? So <laughs> we, we went through this on the last one too. Um, they'll be stationary. Um, and no, I won't tell you where we're going to put them or what they look like because we <laughs> the whole purpose is so we're collecting um, that so we can help prevent crime or deter crime or solve crime. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any further questions before we vote on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, we have Police Chief Myers to rescind council motion 21 547 and budget amendment. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council rescind council motion 21 547 and authorize a com comptroller to amend the general ledger account and increase the JAG grant purchase account 101. Dash three hundred dash nine eight one point zero five six by twelve thousand five hundred dollars and decrease the capital outlay account one oh one dash three hundred dash nine one eight point zero 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 by twelve thousand five hundred. This is for the purchase of the five license plate readers as outlined in nine J. Support or by Councilman Abella. Is there any questions in regards to this? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Next, under new business, this is the business license re renewal for Livernois Motorsports and Engineering located at 2500 South Gully. Madam Chair. Councilman Constant. I move that the Dearborn Heights City Council renew the business license for Livernois Sports and Engineering at 2500 South Gully is outlined in 13A. The poor. Support by Councilman Baydoun. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Next, we have comments from council members. Council Chair. I have Councilman Wenzel first. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say happy Thanksgiving to uh, my fellow council members and uh, all the residents of Dearborn Heights. Have a safe and blessed Thanksgiving. <laughs> And I'd like to also say on behalf of myself, and I'm sure all the council members, our prayers go out to Ray Muscat and his family who are going through a very sad time now with uh, his mother. I won't elaborate any more on that. Um, but our prayers are with you, Ray. And um, I would like, I just I just purchased a lease vehicle. Uh, I, I, I leased a F-150 for two years and I bought it out. And when I bought the vehicle, it had a five year or five or six year, 100,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. And when you purchase it, the warranty goes along with the vehicle. It's a bumper to bumper warranty. I think we should look into this for future lease end situations. Because sometimes I know when I talk to my salesman, sometimes it's, it's beneficial to, to buy it and sometimes it's not. So I think each situation is, is unique. And we should look into this for for future uh, for future uh, items that come before us. Thank you, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Next, we have Councilman Muscat. Uh, number one, uh, you know, we'll go back to the fleet car. There, you know, when you buy vehicles, it's always asked, you know, if this is going to be a personal car, business car, or fleet cars. Automobile dealers and or automobile companies treat these vehicles much differently than. Uh, your normal car that you purchase for yourself, okay? Uh, once you start using them for business and, and uh, as far as a fleet car, like, what, like we do, it, a lot of that changes, but we'll move on. Um, I still haven't, you know, I received uh, some paperwork from our clerk's office on the planning commission, and I read this 19-page document, and I have yet to see anywhere in this document where the planning commission gets to make the final decision on approving anything. It's a recommendation to city council. And we have not been getting any recommendations to vote on. And now things are being put out there and being built. And, you know, we get, I get calls from residents, what the heck is going on here? Who is allowing all of this stuff? Well, if we're in the blind, how are we going to respond? You know, how are elected officials going to respond to a group of people that are appointed? Okay. I read that 19 page document. There isn't anything that gives them that authority. The only authority that they have is to give it to us. They review it for us. They make sure everything's all done right. And they have uh, whoever does their planning for them. And, and, uh, and it comes to us to vote on. So what has happened and who took that away from us? I, I, I believe I asked Mr. Miyaki, uh, if, and if I didn't, I apologize, but I want our attorney to look into this and get back to us at ASAP on this. I asked. Um, corporate counsel, could you give us an answer on that? Yes, I've been ask, asking for direction from someone to, who has the authority. Uh, no disrespect meant to Councilman Wenzel or Councilman Muscat, but uh, uh, they asked others to basically give me that direction. And if you're giving me that direction now, council chair, I will get back to everyone on that. Yes, let's do it. They seem okay, very, very good. concerned. Thank you. Thank you. And I got a few other things, council chair, if you bear with me, please. Go ahead. Uh, I've had, uh, you know, we go back to the tree issue. We've got a lot of trees that are left untrimmed uh, sycamore trees that are, are, are shedding everywhere. 
Um, matter of fact, I was looking outside today and, and kind of embarrassed that I'm watching my neighbor trim his tree, not his tree, a city tree, because we can't get it trimmed and they can't park their car in their driveway or in the street because it's so bad. And yet we wait for the first week of November to be able to trim these trees and they're not getting trimmed. Um, and, and, you know, I had a, a, a resident call me that said that they've gotten estimates to cut down their sycamore tree at almost half of the price that I believe we're paying Dearborn tree for. And I think we need to start looking out to other companies to find out if we can get these trees, the, the problematic trees, uh, cut down or trimmed uh, so we can get a fair price, uh, you know, go out and, and actually I've got a few uh, phone numbers that I can pass along to the administration, uh, you know, in an email to, uh, to the mayor, which I can do. And, um, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people are asking that the city look into scheduling the street sweepers. So they have an idea of when the street sweepers are coming because no one ever has an idea. And I know we only have, I think two or three sweepers and it costs a lot of money. Uh, but we need to set up some sort of program by for next year. I mean, we got some time to do this, so we can do that. The other thing I have, uh, I want to continue on, is I watch either, I don't know who drops them off, but these utility poles. They come by and drop the utility poles off and just leave them there. I can tell you there's three that have been, been on Cherry Hill and Rosemary for well over a year, okay? There's another utility pole at front of Walgreens on Beach Daily Road. It's been there so long, it's already turned black. They just drop them off and either they're forgetting about them or what, but they put them on people's front lawns or on their property, uh, not on city property. I know it's the easement, but we're responsible to take care of that property. And how do you take care of it with a big two or three utility poles on it? So someone from the administration needs to contact Whoever, if it's the, the cable companies, the uh, telephone companies, or DTE, that they need to start taking care of these. And, and some of these poles, they look like, you know, they put in, they've got so much weight hanging over them, they got 20 degree and 30 degree listings on them. So that's one, that's one thing. The other thing I have is when are we going to start putting in the new water meters that we approved with a bond? I mean, we, I don't know if we're holding off, but these water meters aren't going to get any cheaper. We allocated so much money. I think we start buying them and get them in stock so we can put them in. And I'd like for someone to answer that question of when are we going to start doing that? We already got directing the money. that. Councilman, who are you directing that question to? Yeah, to whomever, uh, DPW or okay. uh, Engineer Ali Dean. Director D Dean, go ahead. Please. Yes, sir. So, so part of um, uh, we do have absolutely, Councilman, we do have the money for uh, uh, the water meter, um, and, but since we're moving on to from from an old technology to a new technology, what we were doing is looking at the we have to do a collection system, meaning that we have to have antenna. These things are going to be read remotely, so we're looking at possible use of remote uh, uh, lo uh, antenna locations throughout the city. So we had one presentation on the technology for the first meter that we selected and we have two scheduled for December. Um, so um, um, the, the idea is that we wanted to, the end users, our staff from DPW, from the billing department, from the, you know, they're all going to be part of the presentation to make sure that the technology we selected uh, will give us what we want. We're not using the old technology anymore. We're doing remote location, remote read, downloaded data at a different uh, rate. So um, um, uh, the systems we're looking at uh, require uh, collection. So we asked uh, um, uh, the city uh, um, corporation council for a list of, um, um, for the ability to use uh, uh, antenna locations that we have throughout the city. So I don't have to build a new one. I wanted to be able to do a collection system using what we currently have so we can save on the installation cost. Um, but there will be a couple more uh, uh, presentations from manufacturers in December. And then after that, we'll put together a package, but we are on track to replace those meters. I, I just don't want somewhere down the line that we kick this can down the road and say, oh, we got to come back for a budget amendment and get more money because uh, the price tag on everything went up. 
So I, 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 that's what I want to avoid because that's I happened agree. in the past, and I don't want to see that happen. I agree. It's part of the it's part of the bond money. I I understand. I have that list in front of me, and and like again, we're moving to a totally different technology now. So I wanted it. Uh, um, uh, we did a survey around the communities that use the new technology to find out if they have any operational issues, and we selected two communities that have the best systems, and that would be Taylor and Dearborn. And then so we're looking at what they have in place, so I don't have to reinvent anything. I just want to make sure that it works for us. And one more thing, uh, yes, if we can uh, bend the mayor's ears a little bit and city council about uh, cell phones for our directors, our directors only. And, uh, you know, it's hard to get a hold of these directors on Friday, uh, Saturday when you have to have them. Uh, I think somebody, somewhere along the line, we got to go back and give our directors uh, cell phones. And uh, just this is all food for thought here. And I just want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. And I thank uh, Councilman Wenzel for the kind words. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you, Council Chair. Councilman Baydoon, you're next. Thank you, Council Chair. <clears throat> I'll be brief. First and foremost, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I am praying heavily and hard, really, really hard for our very beloved councilman, Dave Abdullah, and a victory for the Detroit Lions. Uh, <laughs> really, really hard for that. <clears throat> Honest to God, the man is heartbroken. He was excited over a tie. We'll give him that victory. Him. That's your <laughs> um, that, that is my first and foremost. Second of all, anybody, I was not in the last council meeting. I was uh, exposed to COVID. I fought it. I'm glad I was vaccinated. I'm glad I am vaccinated. I don't want to get into the whole politics behind being vaccinated or not. I can care less. Um, so I was not at the last city council meeting. I want you to know, I felt like the disconnect from everybody on here. I missed you all dearly. Um, and I also, I also wanted to congratulate our mayor and all of the council members that are going to be serving with us, Nancy Breyer, Hassan Ahmed, Tom Wenso, um, and anybody else that I forgot, congratulations to Lynn, congratulations to our treasurer, Lisa Hicks Clayton. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of everybody. Uh, congratulations to, uh, Mr. Abdulhaq as well. And then I also want to speak a little bit about the trees. I, I, I want you to know every morning, the same resident will send me a message and tell me my tree needs to be trimmed. Now, let me, I'm going to backtrack here. I want to tell you guys a little bit about what happened here. I reached out to DPW. They said, it's a certain kind of tree. You cannot cut it to the salt or to the winter. I said, well, and, and this was in July. Beautiful. I called back in August. Hey, I just want to confirm. When do you think we can cut this? It has to be cold. Perfect. I wait in August. Here comes September. Hey, weather's starting to get a little close. Let's schedule this to be uh, prepared so that we can trim down this tree. We're going to do it in October. October 1st comes around. Hey, you know, it's, you know, here comes the Indian summer. It's still warm. You got it. I'm not going to bother you. Here we are, November 23rd. Tomorrow's my anniversary. Three years, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Three years, right? I'm sorry, not three years. Four or five months, the person is still texting me every single morning. It is November 23rd. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell he's going to tell me happy, happy anniversary. Today is November 24th. Why is it my tree trim? This is one of maybe 20. Uh, I understand that we cannot, we don't have the manpower, but I'm begging Ali Deeb to come up with maybe finding a way to contract this out with another tree company and use the contacts from uh, Councilman Muscat. That's it. I don't have a tree company. I, I really don't. But if Councilman Muscat has one, please take his, take the numbers and just let's trim the trees, please. It is literally, it's literally like the roads in Dearborn Heights. But let's fix our trees first so we can finally get to the roads. That is my second thing. On Ford Road, and I believe I brought this up to Ali Deeb, the administration, the mayor. I know we're working on it. I know there is so much going on. But if you look from where Councilman Dave Abdullah works, it looks beautiful. Literally. His office right there looks great. And then you, then you drive from where it ends where Councilman Dave Abdullah works all the way to Telegraph. It's so embarrassing because you look across the street, which is Dearborn. And it looks so nice. Yeah. And I've brought this up. I, I believe it to Ali Deeb. And, and I've spoken to you about this. Honest to God, there are some parts of the, the weeds that are growing. They're still growing. It's winter. Is it November? It's November 23rd. It, they're still growing. It, it's, it's, it's absurd. Please, can we look into that? So Bill Deschamps, Ali Deeb, uh, Mr. Conrad, the mayor, please look into that. I'm so embarrassed of it. It's not the business owner's fault. We failed to maintain in the past. And I understand that. But we cannot let it to continue to fail that way. Please, I beg you guys. Ooh. So if we can make a note of that. Also to Councilman Muscat, I am so sorry. I will keep it brief. Your family is in our prayers. 
you thank are you. in our prayers. Um, and with that, I, I go ahead and yield the rest of my time. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> I was a little passionate, forgive me. <laughs> Go Lions. Go Blue. Go your of M. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a few items to talk about. Sorry, I, I just have getting over a cold. Uh, first, I want to know from the controller and the treasurer. Where is the plant Moran audit as, you know, at this time? Normally we receive the audit report early in November and we haven't heard anything. Is there any news on when we expect the plant Moran audit? Okay, I have both the controller and the treasurer unmuted. Who would you like to speak? I'll go with the controller first then the treasurer. Okay. okay um... I mean, anybody who's been to City Hall notices that Plant Moraine has been running around and pretty much every department has been running around getting uh, as much documents and reports in, in place that they can that's being requested of us. Uh, we're progressing, we're, we're doing pretty well. Uh, Plant Moraine, I and mean, we're just tying up loose ends, trying to make sure all the books are balanced so we can close out the year. Uh, we asked for an extension until February to submit the Plant Moraine requested the, the extension until February to submit their final paperwork uh, in. But uh, I mean, we're we're doing pretty well as far as me going through this the first time. So it seems like, um, you know, uh, we're just waiting on some things from, you know, different department heads and everything. But, but other than that, it's progressing. So, and you're free to call me personally if you want to ask me any specifics you want. No, it's just uh, normally we receive it in November. Is there any delay from any specific department? Uh, no, it's just in general, a lot of the paperwork and things that we needed, uh, we started off a little bit late. Uh, we've had a lot of turnover in pretty much all the departments, as you probably know. Uh, so uh, just organizing everything in the pre-audit to get things ready uh, took longer this year. And uh, so, you know, but from my understanding, you asked a subjective question. How's it going? And it seems like it's going pretty well. Uh, things are, are are looking are looking okay. So I was know, I, I was I, I received copy of the finance of the city, the budget basically as of 10 31st 21. I received it from my dear friend uh, Ray Muscat because I wasn't on the list of distribution. Oh, I'm and sorry. You should. It's okay. You should be. It's okay. It's okay, no, no big deal. Okay. Uh, I looked at the bottom, the total revenue and the total expenses, and I see in red over seven and some million dollars in red so, as in, of August and in, uh, uh, I believe. Okay, so October. just so- October, are we, are we in deficit? We didn't collect no. enough money as of today, or those are just numbers there then they're going to be corrected. They're going to be corrected. Basically, what you're seeing, uh, we can't print out a budget report up to date. Uh, now, what what you're what you saw is a budget to activity, and it includes. We still haven't closed out in our system last year's budget uh, because they're doing the audit. So once we have everything in balance, we'll close it out, bring it to council for approval, and then you'll see the numbers balanced out to basically the beginning of this fiscal year. So the okay. numbers you're seeing on there, it's not a budget number, it's uh, it's it's basically a balance that's remaining, including last year's budget. And then adding this, so it's, I explained that in the email as well. So, I mean, if you need like more exact numbers, give me a call directly and we can talk about any specifics okay. you, you have questions about. Is the treasurer department handing you all the information you need for the audit? or there is any delay from the treasurer's office? I think everybody's working hard to try and get the, the information that they need to the auditors. Uh, you know, I mean, some of the stuff yeah. is a little harder to get than others, but we're all working together and we're annoying the heck out of each other trying to get it in a timely manner. So, you know, we're, we're, getting, we're getting the stuff we need. Okay, thank you. 
Mr. Controller, I have a question for the... May, uh, may I? I'm sorry. I'd like to answer that question, though. May I? Yeah, please um, do. You, there was, yeah, you had said the treasurer, the comptroller, councilman. Yes. Do you mind? Um, so, of course, the comptroller had told you, and this is true, there was an extension requested. The comptroller's office certainly... Um, you know, works very closely more so with the auditors and, you know, orchestrating and gathering all the information. I will tell you the treasurer's office has submitted everything as requested in the timeline that was asked and requested, including that's why I'm he's still here tonight, because I had a list that was sent to me Thursday after five. So I said you would get it. I'll be here, even though we had to close the office yesterday because of COVID and we're down to two staff members. We're still meeting those deadlines, so we are not late with anything we're submitting. And I will also tell you, we are a team working through this. There's been a lot of challenges, um, but as you know, the audit is required by state law by December 1st, which is why there was an extension letter uh, from the mayor's office, to the mayor, from the mayor to Department of Treasury. I believe uh, Chief of Staff Hernandez, if you have more questions can answer that. But um, as a team, everybody, including the department heads are all working together to get through this because there there's honestly a lot of challenges from last fiscal year and we're working through that. So, and my door is always open. My phone is always available to you. Thank you, thank Lisa. You've you always been a team player, and I thank you for that. Uh, I have a question for uh, the chairperson. Uh, when did you receive the letter from Mr. Kettner about uh, forensic audit, Madam Chair? Let me make my announcement, and I'll tell what happened. Go ahead. I didn't receive a letter. You sent some email to city council members and I got copy from one of the city council members. I did not receive it directly from you. And, because it uh, was sent to everybody. That one, I, I think I know what you're referencing now. That 11, was back a 11, while ago, but we've got an update. I'll be giving everybody when it's my turn to speak. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I just okay, asked. Because I'm not, I got other people on the list and then I'll speak, but I will okay. tell everybody what's going oh, on. I, I, that was my plans. The letter was sent on 11 2, and I did not receive a copy, and I received the copy from, uh, Ray, from my dear friend again, Ray Muscat. Okay, because you know what? Was, I will take and I will forward to you the copy that I sent to you because everybody was sent one individually. I did not okay. receive one. And that concerned me very much because I'm the one who's asking all these questions. No. And I am in the dark, not knowing that there was a letter from Mr. Kettner explaining lots of things which could have made my life and everybody's life a lot easier and saved all of us lots of, you know, argument over. Right, right. This. And I did send it to you. I will go back on my emails and I will re-forward it to you. And I apologize. I, I got it. You don't have you don't have to send it. But there is lots of uh, information, and I hope that the council will allow me to make it public to the residents so they know what's going on. Uh, and I believe uh, there was some information that the mayor did cooperate was the audit and he did provide them was the information which they asked for. Just to make that clear to all the residents that Mr. Bezzi had provided the information which they asked for and I didn't see anything in the letter stating otherwise. So I just want the public to know that and I want to wish everybody happy holidays and I don't know if I will be in the country next meeting for the study session because I will be traveling to Egypt and Lebanon for a few days. So happy holidays, everybody. And I thank you very much for the time you give me. Next we have Councilman Constant. We couldn't hear you, Council Chair. Councilman Constant. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we, I think should maybe appoint a group to uh, or the mayor can appoint someone to look the advantages of leasing cars for the city versus owning 
uh, the cars, possibly the mayor, our comptroller, and our head of compliance, uh, uh, Director Hassan Jamal. Uh, I too want to wish uh, that uh, Councilman Ray Musket's mother uh, has a speedy recovery or is is uh, uh, stays with us for a while. I remember speaking with her several times when I was the annual judge of the Miss Malta contest when Larry Zara was alive and she would be at the Maltese Club. Is very nice woman, very proud of her son. Um, the happy birthday to Mary Lawrence, who worked uh, many years in the clerk's office and worked uh, several years in my law office here. Um, happy 29th birthday again. And uh, happy Thanksgiving. I hope everyone has a blessed Thanksgiving uh, with their family. And a, a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Corporate Council Miyaki. Go ahead, please. Uh, Council Chair, I was just going to comment on some things that were raised by both Councilman Muscat and Councilman Baydoun in a little more peripheral way. Uh, the mayor and I have discussed this, but it has to do with trees. There was a U.S. Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit decision about the Canton Tree Ordinance. Uh, so we may have to revisit any number of things having to do with our current tree ordinance. And that may allow us to proceed a bit differently uh, with respect to some of the issues that they have raised, uh, even though it would not necessarily uh, affect any sort of issues in terms of us hiring in terms of labor, but perhaps there's uh, other ways to deal with some of these issues uh, in terms of the actual property owners uh, in light of this decision. So I will be uh, getting back to the council um, in the not too distant future. Again, trees are not something we necessarily consider as much of a priority in the middle of the winter, but I just wanted to inform the council uh, with respect uh, to that issue and maybe people can start thinking about our current tree ordinance and what they might want to end up seeing changed in it. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Chief Myers. Um, yes, ma'am. I was just waiting for those community announcements. Oh, okay. Uh, it wasn't right. to respond to anybody. Thank you. All right. Well, then, before we go to community announcements, I'd like to make a couple announcements. First of all, I've been working with Mark Kettner with the Raymond Group. And we have finally determined he's available on Tuesday, December 7th at 6 p.m. Um, for his financial analysis report. Um, he originally tried to give it back in April, but was refused by someone who really didn't have authority. Um, he asked me to please advise everyone that this agreement with their financial analysis is with city council only and anybody else contacting him outside of city council is not supposed to be doing that so at this time we will have him on tuesday december 7th at 6 p.m that's mark kettner with the raymond group for our financial al analysis report and it will be via zoom it's going to be a special study session for that so he can bring us up to speed on what's going on Okay. And also, too, I wanted to ask the mayor on something. Um, what is our protocol now for if somebody comes down with COVID in the city? In the past, we got emails. And I know Elizabeth's boat of Perry is gone. So is there anybody else that's going to take that over to kind of let us know where we're at as far as COVID goes in City Hall? So we have we have a new director. When you weren't here last at the last meeting, it was announced we have a new director when you were absent from the last council meeting. Correct. So, yeah, so we do have a new uh, HR director. She's online right now. And okay. uh, we'll do the same thing as uh, we're sending uh, emails to all everybody in the city hall. So if you guys want to be included, we'll make sure that you guys are included as well. So right yeah, now- Yeah, because Elizabeth already did. Well, anyway, let me finish, please. Uh, we uh, there was an email that was just sent out, you know, recently, and uh, so we're mandated everybody that comes into the city hall, including council members, 
they're required to wear masks inside the city hall. So just want to make sure that you guys know. So uh, it doesn't exclude anybody. Anybody that comes into any city building uh, will have a mask on uh, for the safety of the residents and also the employees that work for the city. But we'll make sure that you guys are included on the future emails. Also, too, it's my understanding that the seniors went on a Mackinac Island trip and recently, and one of the people on the bus tested positive for COVID. Can you tell me if we have um, identified the seniors that went and notified them to get tested? Well, this is the first I've heard of it, Council Chair. I wish you would have called me earlier. I would have looked into it and would have answered you before this meeting. Okay, because it's so common you, knowledge you, around the city. Well, it's not, I didn't get it. I didn't, I'm not aware of it. And nobody from my staff is aware of it. And I wish there was better communication from your part or the council to myself or well, anybody. It's one, Well, I'll, I'll refer that to our, our council. But I would like to see them at least get a hold of those seniors because right after that, there was a senior luncheon where some of those seniors were present. So, you know, our seniors are our most fragile residents. And I, we all worry our numbers are up. That's why we're not in Riverside Auditorium tonight because the numbers are so high. And that's, why we, went, and that's why we messed up at the city hall council chair. So. Right. Uh, I'm taking all the precautions from the. No, series. I know you are. You have been. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Next, we have Treasurer Hicks Clayton. Oh. <laughs> thank you. I'm waving and trying to. If I knew sign language better, I would be doing that. Thank you. Um, so I just have three really quick announcements. Um, first of all, thank you, Honorable Council body, the mayor, the finance team, everybody, uh, Div Dad for coming together. We live launched today and it went really well. The ribbon cutting went well and somebody actually did a transaction while they were there. I was a little nervous. Um, but we're pretty, I know it's like, this was in my nightmare. Was it going to not work? <laughs> you know, but it did. And I wanted to let people know that DivNet is live and you can pay at the kiosk there. And we'll put it on the website where all the locations are. We're part of a network. There's over 80 locations, but we do have several in Dearborn Heights, um, both ends of the city, by the way. So it's very convenient for people. Um, you can also download the app from your app, Apple or whichever you know, phone you have service. Um, you can do pay by your app or web-based. And of course you can still come here in person. We're here as well. So I just wanted to share that with you. And again, check our website for the city on uh, the treasures page because we will include all that information. With that, real quick, December 1st is next Wednesday. And that means winter taxes are being mailed. So I know I should have probably waited until after your Thanksgiving, um, but yes, so please watch for your winter taxes, your 21 tax bill, if you do not receive it by the second week in December, because sometimes things happen, um, please call us. We'll make sure you get it. Our number is 313-791. 3410. And the last thing I have is more of a question for the council. Um, if you recall, when we did the bond, the 21 bond, there's 25 million. Um, there was a question raised about an investment strategy. And so I've been working with Morgan Stanley, and they now have actually sent me all the information. I want to see if council body would like a study session to review this, or what your preference is. So it's just kind of a general question for or, you all. Or, or I can just email it. <laughs> no, but I, I do have it, the information and I do want study you to be- A study session would be nice. A study session, yeah. And then I can bring in Morgan Stanley as well. So if that's what the council's preference is. And I just want to be very transparent with you all and make sure you're part of, because this is, this is significant. This is 25 million. 
um, that we have bought. Actually, it's going to be less than that now because you know the money's going to be uh, moved to water that's owed to water. But it's still significant, and it's over a course of a few years. So you may be interested in that investment strategy. So hey, if, thank you. I right, thank you. Next, we have Chief Myers. Yes, thank you, Council Chair. Uh, a couple announcements from the police department and from the fire department in the city as a whole. Uh, first, uh, this Saturday, uh, November 27th, um, we are doing our Stuff a SWAT Truck event, and we are doing it this year in conjunction with our friends at Hype Athletic Community um, on Warren Avenue down there uh, between Telegraph and Ann Arbor Trail. And what we're asking is that if uh, anybody would like to come uh, contribute a new uh, unused gift for kids between the ages of uh, zero and 15 years of age, uh, boys and girls, to swing by Hype Athletics and uh, come see the police department. We'll have our SWAT truck out there. Our goal is to fill up that truck with toys, which will ultimately be uh, uh, given to the good fellows here in Dearborn Heights. So there'd be no child without a Christmas. So we look forward. I know there's a big football game going on at the same time in the state. Um, but uh, if you could take some time away from that, or if you want to drop it off early, Hype will be open and they'll have some collection bins there for us as well on Saturday. But one to four on Saturday for the Stuff of SWAT truck, uh, please come out and see us. The next thing would lead into Goodfellows. Uh, Chief Brogan's out here uh, on the meeting with us. Uh, Dearborn Heights Goodfellows will be out on the corners Friday and Saturday, December 3rd and 4th. So please drive safely around us. Please be generous. Uh, the Goodfellows Newspaper Drive is uh, one of the, uh, the, the perennial or annual events here in the city that are, is really a big deal for our, our residents, for our friends, our neighbors. And it's, it's a great way to start off the holiday season. So please be generous. Please be safe. And uh, join us on December 3rd and 4th. And please contribute to the Dearborn Heights Goodfellows. So no child will be without a Christmas. And then uh, finally... Um, I don't get to say it often enough to the men and women that work for the police department, but with Thanksgiving, I want to publicly say how appreciative I am of the men and women that work out on the road, that work inside dispatch, our civilian employees, our jailers that work part-time trying to put themselves through school so they become law enforcement um, officers. Um, thank you very much for all they do. Uh, it makes my job a pleasant job. Uh, enjoyable job to work with such great people. So thank you all of them. And really to everybody else in the city, thanks, happy Thanksgiving, and uh, please be safe this uh, weekend. So thank you. Next, we have Mike Blackburn. Hi, uh, this is just a uh, comment for the council chair. Um, December 7th, there actually is a tree lighting cer ceremony. Um, maybe somebody from recreation can uh, speak speak on that before you schedule any um, meetings on that day. Ooh, what time is the ceremony? Ooh, is right. I don't have it on hand with me right now. Maybe if somebody from the recreation department said, mean they I've got her here uh, right now. <laughs> Go ahead. We can't hear you. Your microphone's not on. Can you hear me better now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the tree lighting ceremony is Tuesday, December 7th, um, 6.30 to 9 up at Warren Valley Golf Course. Oh, boy. Um, I know Mr. Kettner said he probably would need only about 15 minutes. Would you like me to change it to 5 p.m. on that day? Yeah. Um, Let's do Let's do 5 p.m. He said he doesn't really have a lot to give us. Or should we try and go Wednesday? Even better. Wednesday would be a better day. You know what? That's correct. I will go ahead and get a hold of him and see if December 8th works for him. And I'm sure it will. Um, I'll call him tomorrow. December 6th. December 8th, which is Wednesday, and I will ask him if we can do it at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Okay. At this time, is there any more public announcements? 
at this. Go ahead, Katie. Thank you. Um, so I did want to announce the tree lighting. Um, I think we got that out of the way, though, Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. at Warren Valley Golf Course. Um, I also wanted to thank um, everybody who came out to our Thanksgiving luncheon last week. Um, Chief Myers, Chief Brogan, um, Mayor, thank you very much. Um, we had a really great reception. The seniors um, said they really, really enjoyed all that. Um, and then really quick, I just wanted to, to touch on, on the, the COVID that was brought up. Um, Any time that we were um, alerted, if anybody testing positive or anything for COVID, we let anybody know, you know, right away and, and make sure that we have a, a safe environment um, for everybody. So I just wanted to make Good. sure that 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 that's that that's out there and that's pretty clear. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, any more public announcements? At this time, we will open it up to public comment. Three minute limit, name, street, and city. I don't see any. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Support. Support. Supported by Councilman Constant. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, meeting has ended. Have a happy Thanksgiving, happy everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.